Hey there, thanks for tuning into Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and I just got back from, in my opinion, the best LEGO convention ever, and undeniably the biggest in the US, Brickworld Chicago 2024. And no, I don't know why the lights just turned off. Let's get into my crazy story about this insane convention right now. Okay, so let me tell you about Brickworld Chicago, which I think is one of the best and definitely the biggest LEGO conventions ever. And this was somehow even more fun than last year's. Now, I'm gonna format this vlog a little bit differently because last year I actually literally put out like five videos on Brickworld, one for each of the four days I was there, as well as a video dedicated purely to my haul, but to be completely honest, I did a lot more LEGO related stuff last year than I did this year. And that statement probably is going to sound a bit strange because you're probably wondering, Duck Bricks, you were at a LEGO convention. What do you mean you did more LEGO stuff last year than this? But to be completely honest, not saying I'm a bit LEGO conventioned out, but I do love going around the convention floor and seeing the bills and everything. But what I really love about Brickworld Chicago is that literally the entire universe pulls up. And I kid you not, if you name like any popular or big LEGO YouTuber or big LEGO mockist, Odds are pretty high that if they're operating out of the USA, they're probably going to be at Brickworld Chicago. And because of that, a ton of my friends who I haven't seen in a while were actually all together in one place. So I spent like a good 60 to 70% of my time just basically hanging out and talking to people or doing fun stuff completely unrelated to the actual convention versus actually spending time in the hall. And I feel like for a lot of my friends, they had a pretty similar experience where, yeah, we went in the hall a few times, once or twice during setup, especially, but we basically just spent the time hanging out, which I think was a lot more fun and basically a lot more the reason why I want to go to Brickworld Chicago than most other Lego conventions. But I will have to say that for the purposes of folks watching on YouTube here to see Lego content on Duck Bricks, it actually should be pretty quick this time. So I'm going to tell my entire story because it's kind of a crazy roller coaster. And I really appreciate how folks are. Also, I've seen people comment saying they want to hear stuff about my life and stuff that I do for fun as well. So hopefully this is going to be kind of one of those videos. But if you're looking for a video that purely is, here's every single one of the builds at Brickworld Chicago, or here's like all of my favorite mocks, I'm gonna call out a few, but honestly, I'm gonna really focus on what's memorable to me, which were the fun experiences, and just tell a story. So, buckle up, and let's hear about my Brickworld 2024 Chicago experience. Now, the crazy thing is that I actually was supposed to get in a lot earlier than I actually did. You see, Brickworld Chicago, like most LEGO conventions, has some private days, where if you have a badge to go in for private days, you can actually go in before the public comes in, the ticketed people come in, get the chance to see the builds. So it's a little bit more chill. People are setting up their mocks in the hall. People are just flying in, and you're not going to be stopped. I do love being stopped. If you do ever recognize me, please do stop me. I love it. I'm absolutely a, a shill for fame, and I definitely appreciate appreciate the ego boost. You know, I'm just completely self-centered and love it when people stop me and say hello because I am the greatest Lego YouTuber on earth. No, I'm kidding. But actually though, if you do recognize me, it is always good to meet people, but it also was equally good to just go in the Lego hall and chill with some close friends. And that's why Brickwood Chicago offers a bit of both. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday are setup days. And then Saturday, Sunday are the convention days. I initially was supposed to take a red eye flight Tuesday night going in from here, from Seattle to Chicago, leaving here at like midnight and getting into Chicago at around 5 a.m., which would have been closer to 3 a.m. my time. So it was not gonna be a fun flight. I'll leave it at that. And I actually hosted an auction the night before, like a whatnot live auction the night before. And I was sitting there packing up the stuff. And I was like, is it physically possible to pack everything and ship them out in time for my flight? Yes. Do I want to? No. And that was probably the greatest choice I could have made because I proceeded to get literally zero sleep the entire time I was at the convention, which you're about to hear about. So anyways, I was like, I just have a gut feeling. I don't intend on pulling all-nighters or staying up that late. <laughs> Wrong. I, I swear at the time I didn't intend to, but I was like, you know what? Just in case, I just have a feeling I might want to get as much sleep as possible. So, you know, 
I did my usual thing. I went to bed at like 2 a.m., got up at like 7.30, 8 for work. So that was actually quite a lot of sleep for me. So I woke up on Wednesday feeling super refreshed. I changed my flight to then arrive. It was leaving after the workday and arriving pretty late in the evening at around like 8 or 9 p.m. in Chicago on Wednesday night. And thankfully, most people seem to have done the same because there weren't a ton of folks actually at the convention on Wednesday. So I'm actually pretty glad I made that switch. But Thankfully, I was going into the airport and my buddy Brick Lover Brad, go check him out on Instagram, actually happened to be able to pick me up. So he drove out, picked me up from the airport. Seriously, huge thank you if you're watching this, man. I really appreciate it. All right, we're pulling into the convention now. Legend Brick Lover Brad Hello. is giving me a ride. Also, some great pizza that we just shared, dude. That Absolutely was delicious. Awesome. But we have arrived at Brickworld Chicago. I cannot wait to see what mocks are in store for us and what vendors as well. He's actually the same person who brought me to the airport to drop me off last year. So we kind of literally picked it up right where we left off and I hadn't seen him in a year. So we had so much to catch up on and we had an amazing, delicious dinner at Giordano's, which is a really great Chicago classic deep dish pizza restaurant. It was not going to be the last time I had Giordano's. So Two of us had a great meal, got to the convention, and literally within seconds of walking into the convention hall, I was pulled into a live podcast with uh, my, my good buddy, Man Doctor Productions, aka MNR Productions, Ryan, and uh, that was actually on a couple of Brickheads. So we were streaming live, Sean and, and all the other boys, Sean and Brent, of a couple of Brickheads, the podcast, who I've appeared on occasionally, were hosting a live podcast. The duck is in the building. Quack, 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 quack. And it was literally like 11 p.m. at night. I was going in and out of calls with uh, my co-founder for some of the exciting startups that we're working on. So I was literally just being pulled in a ton of different directions. But I had to jump on the podcast. I said a few words. It was good catching up with folks. I don't think I'd seen Ryan since... It must have been Atlanta BrickCon, which was, gosh, I have lost all concept of time, but I want to say that was back in like March or maybe February. It couldn't have been April. That's too recent. Anyway, earlier this year. So it was cool. Got a chance to catch up with him live on podcast, hear what he was up to. And then it was time to actually go ahead and go and explore the rest of the hall. So... I caught up with a good friend, uh, JB. He's awesome. He's actually the designer of the BTS set for LEGO Ideas. So that was super cool, getting a chance to catch up with him. And I spent the rest of the time just kind of wandering around the exhibit hall, having conversations with friends I hadn't seen in months or even years. And before I knew it, it was like 5 a.m. It was already getting bright outside. I was still in the convention hall. So I was like, okay, I really need to go to sleep because I have work tomorrow at like 8 a.m. So I went to my hotel, went to bed, woke up bright and early for work, and unfortunately, I just was working remotely. Obviously, I didn't take off work for this. I wanted to make sure I was just spending all my time at Microsoft as I should be. Uh, so I basically sat and just did meetings, 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 meetings. It was pretty much nonstop all uh, Thursday morning until around like late afternoon on Thursday. So I basically just spent the entire Thursday sitting in my hotel working. If it wasn't Microsoft, it was one of my other startups. It was a lot of fun. I mean, it was a lot of just good work getting done. But I was kind of feeling bad because a lot of people were coming in being like, oh, where are you at? Let's hang out. And I'm like, I am working, but I'll see you later. Anyways, the timing worked out where my good buddy Jonathan, aka Mini Superheroes Today, who has appeared in many a video and will appear in many a video in the future, happened to arrive in Chicago at the convention center at pretty much the exact moment where I was wrapping up my last work meeting for the day. So I was like, okay, perfect. Let's get lunch, which at this point was like a very, very, very late lunch. But we actually got a chance to catch up with some other folks during lunch as well. Mike Labrizi, Jonathan's friend, who's now a really good friend of mine. He really helped me out through a bind, which you're about to hear about because things are about to go crazy. As well as my friend, Paul Chu. He is a big supporter of Duck Bricks. He was on podcast for us for Lego Masters. We all met up because he's local to the area. So is Mike. So me, Mike, Paul, and Jonathan all went out to this restaurant where I had a delicious burger and we had a good meal, good conversation, but then it was time to actually go ahead and check out the convention center because we hadn't really done that yet. As soon as Jonathan and I got in, we kind of were bombarded with folks saying hi. It wasn't even public days yet, but obviously there's like, you know, everyone when you're in this community. So I was saying hi to folks. He was saying hi to folks. I don't, I think I lost track of him. Like I, I just didn't see him for a while after that, but we were going around the convention center, and of course, I got a chance to catch up with my buddy Sean Bricks My Mind, who I literally hadn't seen in person 
since Denmark last September. So it's been quite a while. So it was awesome seeing him and seeing a ton of folks with him who I had met last year at Brickwell Chicago. So that was super, super fun. And we actually got a chance to go on over to a local bricks and minifigs where I got the first item on my haul, which is currently buried. It's over here. We'll talk about that later on in my haul. It's basically a 2012 Lego employee gift of a wooden chess set. Literally has nothing to do with Lego other than a little Lego text embedded in it. And I probably spent way too much money for that. But I did get that from Bricks and Minifigs. And that was super awesome because that was actually an item that I didn't really know existed. Like, I think tangentially was in the periphery of my mind. Like, it was kind of just tucked away in a back corner. But I hadn't thought about it, so I was kind of surprised when I saw it. I thought it was really cool. It's the 2012 LEGO Employee Gift. Anyways, spent a bit of time at Bricks and Minifigs, but unfortunately I did have to run over because I had a startup call. And that kind of came up unexpectedly, so went back to the hotel. I actually almost didn't make it. I was on time, but I was like sweating. Like, I showed up in the meeting for, like, a big, big meeting, and I was, like, visibly out of breath because I had, like, taken the Uber back to the hotel, sprinted to my room, set up my laptop, boom, the second I did it, I joined the call. So that was, whew, cutting it close, but, you know, a wizard is never late, nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. And I have been called a wizard many, many times by many people. Definitely that is a name people have called me, 100%. So... Obviously, it was totally fine, and I did actually make it on time, and it was a great meeting, but by the time I had finished my meeting, we had just been discussing, 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 and going back and forth. It was a pretty serious meeting, so I was pretty drained by the end of it, honestly. I was quite exhausted, and by that point, I was getting a little hungry as well. So partway through my meeting, I see Jonathan text me. He's like, hey, dude, we going out to dinner soon? I'm like, give me a second. I totally get it if you have to go without me, but uh, I'm in a meeting, so please wait. So he did wait. Anyway, by the time I got out... We all decided to go ahead and go on and hit Giordano's one more time for the second night in a row because Jonathan hadn't had it yet. And of course, I got a chance to catch up with my boys, Dom and Ethan, the absolute legends of LEGO Masters Season 3. I had seen them pretty recently because I saw them in Orlando, Florida. Like, was that last week? Oh my gosh, that was last week. That feels like months ago. Yeah, so I saw them like last week. And then I saw them the week, like a couple weeks before that in Jacksonville, Florida for another Lego event. And they were in Atlanta. So I, I see these goobers like, I mean, I see them too much. Honestly, Dom, come on. I, I see that guy too much. Ethan, Ethan's fine. Dom though, I see that guy way too much. You know, a, a little less would be fine. <laughs> I'm kidding. Anyway, so Dom, me, Ethan, and, and the other guys, we went out to Giordano, and I got a chance to catch up with so many other folks, like Bricking Up Brad, whose birthday was actually the next, or in two days on the Saturday, so that was awesome. Anyway, got a great meal, and what did we do after the meal? This was Thursday night. Oh my goodness, what on earth did we do on Thursday night? I want to say that we just went back to the convention and checked out the builds, but I don't have a strong memory of that. Have, has, did something happen that I blotted from my mind? I mean, either I'm losing it because this was like four days ago, three days ago. Anyway, a lot happens in a few days. I mean, this is quite embarrassing, actually. I don't remember what happened. Let me go check the footage. Ah, yes, that explains everything, because I have literally no footage from that evening, and I do remember why now. It's because we went directly from dinner straight to Jonathan's hotel room and spent the next, like, six to seven hours just having the deepest conversation imaginable. And this is my favorite part about the LEGO conventions. It's not necessarily the builds or the events or the activities. It's literally sitting down with a group of people. I probably won't be in the same room with that same group for another time until next year. It like might be another year until we're all together just talking about life and not even really talking about LEGO. Like I think the really cool thing about the LEGO conventions is that you make friends that you can talk about other non-LEGO stuff with. And I feel like that is the mark of a true friend in the LEGO community. Is like, can I talk to someone about like, I don't know, my love life, right? Like something completely unrelated. Maybe that's a bad example. That's a little too close. <laughs> I don't know about like uh, work or, or jobs or like politics or the economy, anything that's not Lego related. If you can sit down and have a conversation with them, even if they're like the most diehard Lego fan ever, I think that's really cool because it's about bringing people together. And that's what these conventions do. 
So we were sitting there with uh, me, Jonathan, Ethan, Dom, Mike Labrizzi, and Brad of Brickin' Up Brad, different Brad, and uh, we were just talking, and I think that like at one point Jonathan went to sleep, so then me, Ethan, and Dom like went downstairs to the lobby and just continued talking to people, got a chance to catch up with like Nicole, Girl Bricks a Lot, and so many other folks, and we were sitting there chatting, and I think we only started realizing that it was quite late because the sun was coming up. So this was my like second night in a row, of sleeping at like 5 a.m. And don't worry, the next night is when things get really crazy. But anyway, it was my last night of that, and uh, that was it. So um, so I went to bed, and the next day, work day as usual, Friday was a work day, so I got up, had my work meetings, and thankfully I was able to catch the LEGO uh, Ambassador Network lunch, which had been organized by Maticus. He actually brought literally every LEGO Ambassador at the convention together for one gigantic lunch, and we were all sitting there and eating, and this is where stuff starts going crazy because folks might know from my other stories and vlogs and talking that I personally have a severe nut allergy. If you ever want to kill me, just give me peanuts or any nuts, really hazelnuts, walnuts, cashews, almonds, tree nuts, any nuts, and I am gone. Like it's, it's over. Like I, I need to make a will at this point because it's happened so many times. Usually what happens is that I have a pretty regular process now. If I ever ingest nuts, I, I usually ask, so I'm pretty careful. I always ask and I always carry an EpiPen, but I am severely, severely, deathly allergic to nuts. Anyways, I order the sirloin steak at the restaurant. Now you might be wondering, what kind of monster puts peanuts in steak? Okay, listen, like if I was eating like an Indian dish of like chicken with sauce, that's on me, you know? I've done it a lot of times before. That's totally, I get it. If I was eating like Thai noodles, you know, I'm taking the risk. It's like, I might die. I don't know. I mean, I've lived a pretty interesting life. I could, I could just die, whatever. You know, it's me taking a risk though. But sirloin steak, come on. Are you kidding me? What, who puts, anyway, it, that's a whole thing. But I showed up 30 minutes late to lunch because of my work meetings. So I was already like a little embarrassed. I didn't want to like sit and wait and make everyone hold up. So I literally whip open the menu and I'm like, eh, steak. All right, eh, steak's always fine. Yeah, I'll get the steak. So I tell the waiter I'll get the steak. It's all good. Anyway, I'm sitting there. I'm talking to Jean, Jean's version. And uh, we're just chatting about Lego stuff. And she's like, you like your steak? And I'm eating it. And I'm like... Yeah, I guess it's fine. And I'm like, I don't know why I'm not, not super enthused about this. Because if you know anything about me, you know I love meat. And uh, steak, especially. And so, for me not to be that happy about a steak is pretty rare. Like, yeah, I've had good steaks, I've had bad steaks, I've had mediocre steaks. If I'm eating a steak, though, I'm usually pretty good. But for me to reply, like, I don't know, I, I guess it's fine. I knew something was a little off. Anyway, a couple more bites in, I'm like... Feeling a little something scratchy in my throat. I feel my throat closing up, getting a little harder to breathe. A little less oxygen's going to my brain. I'm asked a question about Lego. It takes me more than a millisecond to respond. And I'm like, okay, something's going on. So I go to the waiter and I was like, hey, I don't think so. Like, I'm probably just imagining it. But there's no chance that you put nuts in this steak, right? Like, I'm not getting nuts in my food right now. And so like, oh no, yeah, this steak has mole sauce, which as you know, is made of peanuts. So they're saying that, and I just am thinking, oh my goodness, it might be over. I mean, like, at a LEGO convention, that, like, just put me up in the auction for the yard sale of who gets to keep my collection when I'm gone, you know? That is the right place for me to go, because then, my friends have always said, they know I'm gonna die of something at some point. It's not gonna be natural causes. I'm either gonna die because of plastic, aka Lego, or either a Lego-related pursuit, or me going somewhere I shouldn't be because of Lego has led to me getting killed, or I would die because of peanuts. And it's 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 only one of two things. I mean, the third recently added has been women, but I mean mostly it's the two things. So it's either it's either Lego, it's either <laughs> Lego, or it's it's uh, peanuts. But this would have combined them, because not only would I have been death of peanuts at a Lego convention, but I would have been dying because of a Lego-related thing. So that would have killed two birds with one stone. My friends would have been so happy their predictions were right. I mean, maybe they would have been sad at the beginning. But then they would be like, see, I knew he would die because of Lego. And that validation is very important. So anyway, I'm sitting there choking. I'm like, oh my goodness, it's over. So 
The moment I hear mole sauce peanuts sprint back to the table, I'm like, hey, Jonathan, can you like pay for my steak? I'll pay you back. But uh, I might be in some serious trouble. So I sprint off. Everybody else is like, what on earth is wrong with this guy? He's like, what's going on with him? He's lost his mind. He's lost his marbles, really. So I just, I didn't really explain anything because I couldn't at that point, I could barely talk. My, uh, my throat was closed up and I'm making light of this, but it was actually, I was kind of scared. Like it was actually kind of scary. You know, I, I've come close to like death by peanuts quite a few times, but this time it was closing up really quickly. So I was getting kind of worried. So I sprint up to my room. Um, thankfully I find my EpiPen and I'm like, okay, I can take my EpiPen. I'll be all good. But then... I need to go to the hospital to get more medication because the EpiPen is just kind of a temporary thing. If I didn't have my EpiPen on me, this channel would, wouldn't be called Duck Bricks, it'd be called Dead Bricks. You know, like it, there would be a post-mortem, Duck Bricks is no longer with us, may he continue building Lego and making videos in heaven or, or hell or in the afterlife or in the void, I don't know. Um, and, uh, and all the videos that come out are, are now posthumous, and that probably would have skyrocketed the channel views and uh, would have made a lot of money. But I wouldn't have been around to see it, so that would have been quite sad. So I was kind of scared. Thankfully, I did have my EpiPen on me, because I always carry not one but two EpiPens. So thank goodness I had it. Take my EpiPen. I feel that adrenaline. I'm good to go. Jonathan immediately, he drops everything. He's like, you good? I'm like, yeah, I've been better, man. I've been a little better. So... And I gotta like, I, I've been kind of joking around a lot during this part of the video, but I genuinely do want to say like, thank you so much. Jonathan and Mike literally dropped everything they were doing. This is Friday, like one of the most fun days at the convention. We had a lot of plans. We had plans to do this, 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 and that. They dropped everything they were doing. They made sure I got medication. I took Benadryl. They got me to the hospital immediately. They literally sat with me for hours at the hospital while I was under observation, while I was being um, given steroids to stop the uh, allergic reaction, give, being given other medication for my stomach. Uh, I mean, seriously, I'm really, really grateful to these folks and to everybody who was around me and uh, making sure I was okay. Like Gene, Thank you. I don't know if you're going to see this, but I know you were checking in, making sure I was okay. And, and I really do appreciate that. So pretty much everybody I was around, I, I'm really thankful for making sure I was good. Um, and, and especially those two who brought me to the hospital and just stayed with me. Um, but I feel kind of bad because I kind of destroyed Friday. Like I burned Friday with that. Um, I was really out of it because I had lost oxygen. So they brought me to the hospital and it was like, I was a little better. I was a lot better after the uh, after the EpiPen and the adrenaline, but then I had to literally sit there for like four hours under observation. So I'm sitting there in the hospital, and Mike Labrizzi takes the funniest selfie. Honestly, like this is the most probably the most legendary Brick World selfie I've ever seen of him, me, and Jonathan. A thumbs up in the hospital. I've got like all the, I'm hooked up to the machine. I have all these wires sticking out of my chest and he posts it with like no context as well, which I thought was hilarious. Like Mike posts it and he's like, oh no duck or something like that. <laughs> or like, why, why duck? And, and like people thought I was dead. <laughs> like I, I think I got like, my phone was fl flooded with messages and I found it hilarious. I like, it's, it's all like kind of a small community. So like, everybody knew like literally everybody at brick world knew exactly what happened which was just the funniest thing so i was getting very kind messages from folks and thank you for the folks who messaged and are like are you good man and i was like yeah i'm good i'm just under observation but i really had to get back to the land meeting because the land meeting is incredibly obviously can't miss my good buddies sarah and jose of the lego ambassador network as they have a roundtable meeting with the ambassadors i gotta i gotta get myself there so i was at the hospital i'm like hey I'm feeling fine. Can you let me go? Nurse comes in and she's like, we're not supposed to do this, but you said you've done this before. And I'm like, yeah, this is like, we're, we're above double digits, ma'am. I'm like this, we're in the high like thirties in terms of the number of times I've gone through this. I know when I'm good and I'll come back if I'm not. So she's like, technically we're supposed to observe you for like two more hours, but if you really got to go, just go, but come back if anything happens and take this medication. So I was like, yes, okay, I can go back to the convention. We rushed back to the con, attend our Lego ambassadors meeting where I learned, I guess some things of consequence. Yeah, that was definitely worth it. 
Uh, anyways, I make it back, make it back for the photo, which of course that was, that was really, that was why I had to be there for the land photo. Of course, of course, most important thing on the schedule. Um, but we had some pretty crazy plans for that evening. So I'm doing okay. I think this was probably the fastest I've ever recovered from a peanut allergy. And that is thanks to the outstanding efforts of Jonathan and Mike, who made sure I got my EpiPen within like minutes of me ingesting the food and then whisked me to the hospital and made sure I got the steroids within like under 30 minutes of me ingesting the food. I think that like saved me because I have had allergic reactions before where I eat nuts and I'm out of commission for like two days. Like I spend the night in the hospital. So I was kind of shocked at how fast I recovered. I genuinely have not recovered faster. Granted, they were like, hey, these steroids are gonna make you really, really sleepy. Like, you're gonna pass out. Hey, duck duck built different, you know? The duck is built different. If there is a night of fun ahead, duck ain't sleepy. So I didn't sleep at all that day. And this is, mind you, after sleeping three hours the night before and three hours the night before that. So I'm wired, but I'm ready to go. So I call up my good buddies, Ethan, Dom, and the absolute giga chad, Matt Mellish. Matt Mellish, if you're watching this, you're the man. What, a, what an absolute legend, Matt Mellish, this guy. So I'm like, look, boys, I got some fun stuff on the docket. And they're all like, you sure? Are you good? I'm like, no, no, no. I booked this stuff for the four of us to do last night. We're going to go out and have fun. So what we did is we actually had a whole plan, but we're actually getting a bit ahead of ourselves because right after the land meeting ended, we had to go to medieval times. And thankfully, Maticus was actually able to organize the entire thing for a gigantic group to go to medieval times. Huge shout out to Maticus for organizing like 30 people to go. Couldn't be me. I, I couldn't. Do, I mean, I could, but couldn't be me. <laughs> Huge respect for that. Like that is that is seriously dedication, and I really appreciate him setting that up because it was a fun time for everyone. But if you don't know what Medieval Times is, we went there last year as well, and that was so funny. I literally lost my voice at Medieval Times. You basically are sitting, eating dinner, and watching a knights tournament unfold before your very eyes, and every section of the room has a certain knight assigned to them. So we were the red knight. And so you have knights you're cheering for. They have jousting, they had sword fighting. One guy whipped out like a mace and started going ham with that. Like, oh my gosh, like skulls were about to get crushed here. The cage went down, there was like a cage fight. It was basically WWE, but with knights. So like WWE, but cool, sorry. So it was awesome. We were having an absolute blast cheering on our boy, the Red Knight, who unfortunately was defeated by the, the treachery and backstabbing of the duplicitous Green Knight. You know, it's just the Green Knights, they just can't have, they just, I don't know. House of the Dragon, Team Green, who is Team Green? I mean, I'm Team Green because I love causing chaos, but like, who is really Team Green? You know, it's always the Greens stirring up trouble. So anyway, the Green Knight backstabbed our guy, the Red Knight. Red Knight goes down, but not without a good fight. But we were absolutely cheering. So then by the time that the big hero rises up, like the Black and White Knight, to beat the Green Knight, we were all half the room. Actually, five-sixths of the room was cheering for that guy to beat the Green Knight, who was just backstabbing everyone and, like, being rude to the Queen. I mean, one thing is backstabbing, but come on, disrespecting royalty? Like, can't do that. Can't do that. Anyway... Green Knight gets defeated, crowd goes wild, but one of my funniest moments walking out of this is obviously you're in there with a ton of strangers, and some people's like, the level that they get into it might not be the same level as you. So, <laughs> so funny. We're walking out of medieval times, and this poor like family with like a kid and everything, like this family comes out and clearly they had fun, but like the parents brought their kid there to have fun. They were wearing green crowns because they were for the green knight. Absolute based Ethan, like walks up to them, squares off and just goes, boo, boo green as they're walking out. And they just give him this absolute look of pure like confusion and disgust. Like I genuinely have no idea what was going through their heads when this random stranger just starts booing them as they walk out. And so like, I'm immediately like, I don't know this guy. Like I do not know this man. I like distance immediately. But like me, like Matt and Tom are just laughing so hard about Ethan going up and booing them. So of course that's now the recurring joke. Ethan hates team green and just will boo them anytime he sees them without like 
without cause. Like, he, bro sees someone wearing green, he's locked in. It is on site for that guy. Like, bro has got his booze ready. So anyways, after medieval times, I had an amazing night planned for the four of us. So, here in Christopher Lee Duckbrick's land, I like to bring my friends out on what I call the Christopher Lee Pipeline. And that pipeline is speakeasy to karaoke to club pipeline. That is the, the Duck Bricks classic pipeline. I mean, that's just everyone knows that's that's my MO because it's so much fun. And each thing is a pregame for the next until you get to level three, as Ethan would say. So we first go out and I had done some research the night before, so I knew where to go. And at this point, I had fully recovered from getting nutted nut ooh having my nut allergy yeah having an allergic reaction that's a better way to put it i i'd fully recovered from the nut and so we all went out and uh obviously as you can hear we were having an amazing time in the car as you can see right now actually <laughs> eventually got to our first location which was the Gatsby Speakeasy and this was super cool because we go into a pretty unassuming coffee shop and they tell us to like uncover a riddle pull a statue in a bookcase and have the doors swing open to get inside so it kind of was like a little puzzle to get inside which was awesome and we go inside and we have some really really great drinks had a great time I just gotta say though you're gonna find this so funny I'm sitting there looking at the menu. You know, like with cocktails, they have like a billion different ingredients. You never read every ingredient. If it looks good, if it's like, oh, vodka, I like vodka. Okay, I'll get that. It's usually fine. I'm a little on edge. You know, I had, I had made the mistake of not reading a menu already. I wasn't going to make the same mistake again. So I'm like, okay, drinks. All right. I'm just going to read the menu just in case. So I'm like about to order this one drink the bartender recommends. So I'm like, okay, vodka, yep, cherry, yep, yep, this, this, okay, okay, blue curacao, okay, mole. Whoa, 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 whoa. There is no shot that this speakeasy we went to had a drink I was about to order that was infused with like mole extract. So essentially, the drink was like spiked with peanuts. If I didn't read that drink carefully... Like, if I, like, just, if any other night, if I had not just been to the hospital being treated for eating mole sauce with nuts, it would have been round two, baby. We would have been turning right around, going round two. And I, well, that would have made a very funny story. I'm very glad I didn't. But are you, seriously, I was saying what monster puts nuts in steak. I will shamefully admit this is the not, this is not the first time that steak has gotten me. Like, I've been killed by steak a lot of times. But drinks? Who puts peanuts in a cocktail? What is wrong with you people? Honestly, I can't believe it. Anyway, mole in a drink. Can you believe that? So thank goodness I didn't get that. And instead, I got something else. I got a lot more of something else, and that was very, very good. And of course, the next move was to go to karaoke. I found a really great karaoke joint. It was like a Korean karaoke place. As usual, the Asian karaoke places are the best. Don't go to a non-Asian one. You heard it here first and heard it here best from Duck Bricks. But I feel like for karaoke, I kind of have to let the clips live for themselves. You know, I can talk about karaoke, but you would want to hear karaoke. So let's see how that went. Shaper of views, creator of news, father of many, paid all his dues. So don't try to run your mouth at the king. A1 ratings, 80k wide, never gonna stop, baby. Play him like a pro. <laughs> so after proceeding to completely lose my voice and essentially just destroy any shot I had at doing any performance the next day, we then moved on to level three, as Ethan would say, the club. So you know me, Duck Bricks does like to go duck clubbing i was going for like an alliterative pun there and and that that's not a pun like that's barely even a dad joke that's embarrassing i'm sorry i said that i'm sorry you had to hear that anyway i do like 
to occasionally enjoy going out to a club once in a while. And especially if I'm in a new place, I do really enjoy going. Like, I actually don't really go that much at all, like, if I'm at home or even just in a city I know. But if I'm in a new city I probably won't ever be in again for another year, I'll go check out the clubs and see what the nightlife is like. So, me, Ethan, Dom, Matt Mellish, four of us go out, and we, we go to this club, and of course I had our medieval crowns still with me. So our medieval times crowns, I fold it up, put it in my pocket. This is a surprise tool that will help us later. Anyway... We go in, we're having a great time, we're dancing, we're singing, it's a super fun vibe, it was awesome. That club closed at like 4, and you bet we were there until it closed. So, we had a great time, it's not like the clubs here which close at 2. Boo. So early. It sure it wasn't like the clubs in Copenhagen which close at 8am and open at midnight. Woohoo! I like that. But, you know, 4am, that's pretty good. So we're sitting there chilling. And I'm not going to go into all the stories here, and I'm not going to, like, dwell too much on this aspect, because this has, like, nothing to do with Lego, but I mean, a little bit. It's just a really, I have to tell this funny story. Four of us guys, we're chilling, we're hanging out. This group of four girls comes up, and they kind of walk up to us at the bar. They're, like, not really talking to us, but they're talking about us. Like, one of them, like, is, like, looking over at me or looking over at, like, Dom or probably Dom, you know, swole Dom. And they're, like, kind of talking to each other. And I'm, like, okay, clearly, like, there's something going on here. And, you know, I'm an extrovert. I'm a very social person. I love making friends. And I'm, like, oh, we, like, we should merge the groups together. Let's just hang out with these girls. So I'm, like, all right, Dom, Dom, Dom. Big, big muscles, Dom. What are you, you going to do? How are you going to integrate our group? Dom's, like... Eh, I don't know, man, I don't know. I'm like, Ethan, Ethan, you gonna go talk to them? Ethan's like, oh, I, I don't know, I don't know, man. Matt Mellis is just there for the vibes. You know, absolute king, bro is just there to hang out. Like, he could not care less what we did or didn't do. So I'm like, all right, guys, looks like I'm taking one for the team if this doesn't go well. I, I'm like, give me your crowns. They're like, why? I'm just, guys, don't question it. Give me your crowns. So I get the crowns. I walk over to the group and I'm like, all right, I'm just putting this crown on one of the girls heads so i whip out the crown i'm dancing with the crown for a little bit we're kind of making eye contact i give her the crown we're like they start cheering the whole group opens up and we're vibing you know we're having a great time and i'm just saying like we were just there to hang out we were just there to have fun and like i just love meeting folks at clubs and like having a good time so now the eight of us had all integrated because i thanks to my personal efforts had opened up the group had introduced each other so like we'd said each other's names very briefly over the club noise so probably no one heard anything but we're all dancing like i'm like dancing with one one of the people there and then there there all the other guys are dancing we're having a great time you know the eight of us we're vibing to the music they're playing absolute bangers it's going good and then out of nowhere and i don't know what was going through my man's head you know like we're all integrated like it's not like we're facing them like no, like, one girl's dancing with me, the other one's dancing with that. Like, we're all intermixed in a group. Ethan runs in the center of the circle and goes, Girls, did, did you know we're Lego masters? And <laughs> this is out of nowhere. And I don't know if it was the way he said it or the sentiment of what was being said. But I kid you not. No, no more than like three seconds pass and this group of poor girls just teleported away. Like the one I was talking to immediately like a look of confusion and disgust goes over her face. She goes to the other person, sell, says something to them and then they all immediately disappear. Like they're here one second and we are vibing for a while. Like it had been like 20, 30 minutes and they're gone. And it was like... I didn't know what to say, so I lock eyes with Matt, and we just start cracking up. It was the funniest thing I, I, I'd ever heard. Honestly, I'm glad Ethan did it, because now I have, like, a hilarious story to tell. And here's the thing. I think LEGO Masters is pretty cool. I think LEGO's pretty cool. There's a time and a place to say it, and there's also a way that you say things, right? Saying, did you know we're LEGO Masters was was not, let me just put it this way, that's not how I would have phrased it. So, here's my line. You know, this is what I always say. What I say is, guess what TV show I was on? You know, leave it at a mystery. Guess what TV show, if, if you have to bring it up. I usually, I wouldn't bring it, but like, if you really want to bring it up, you, the line you say is, guess what TV show we were on? 
and then just don't answer. So if they guess The Bachelor, you know, if they guess like Survivor Island, Love Island, you know, like it's just gonna only go up. And you let them think, you let them wonder, where have I seen these people? And then it's a conversation. And then you can start talking about what shows they watch. So it's a, it's a back and forth, you know? It's, you open a dialogue. You don't just say, did, <laughs> you don't just say, did you know? We're Lego masters. So at that point in the night, I was done. Like, I was just laughing. I, it was so funny. And at that point, the four of us were just there to vibe. So there were a couple of other encounters. You know, some things are not meant to be spoken on YouTube. So I'm not going to get into detail about the other stuff we got up to that night. But I just had to share that story because that was probably one of my funniest, like, semi-tangential Lego-related stories. Poor Ethan. Like, you know, I think Ethan learned a lot from that night. I sure hope he did. Dom, not convinced man learned anything. But Ethan, Ethan, my, my boy definitely learned something that night. So it was just so much fun. We were having a great time. But eventually we end up getting home at 5 a.m. going back to our rooms. I sit down and I'm like, well, I have work to do. Startup work. So I sit down and work until 6.30 until it's bright because I'm like crazy. And then, no, it wasn't even 6.30. Because just as I'm about to go to bed at 6.30... My boy, like, my one of my friends from college texts me. He's like, yo, have you seen the boys, like, new episodes drop yet? And I'm like, well, I've been wanting to, but I haven't yet. And he's like, oh, my God. Well, like, you got to see it. And I see in my group chat with all my college friends, they're all talking about the boys, about the deep and A train. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. Well, now I got to watch it or I'm going to get spoiled. So I'm, like, in my bed, like, watching the first, like, episode of the boys before I, like, fall asleep. Great, great show, by the way. So funny. I love that show. But... So I get to bed at like 7, 7.30 maybe. Anyway, the next day at 10 a.m., I had something really important. Because I, this is the official, like, Brickworld Chicago is now open. There's one other Lego-related thing that happened that night. But the story's funnier when I tell it later in this video, so I'll, I'll explain it later. Anyway... Brickwood Chicago is now open to the public, and if you don't know, I actually got a chance to do a concert with The Fold, the band who does the Ninjago songs. Which, by the way, is super surreal. I'm very thankful to Sean of a couple of Brickheads for setting up the entire thing. Bro is an absolute legend. But it was super cool, because for me, this is music I've been listening to since I was like 11 years old. Like, little baby, duck baby, was listening to The Weekend Whip, singing along, and... To now be like 24 years old performing alongside them was honestly so surreal. And I guess I did a little bit of it last year when they invited the crowd up to sing. But this was like, we were, they they introduced me. We were part of the performance. And I don't know when this video is going to come out. Either yesterday or tomorrow, the video was posted or will be posted of the full concert. So you can check that out if you want. Because that was so much fun. You can hear the Duck Bricks part and the entire fold concert. But our mic check was 10 a.m. on Saturday. So I had gone to bed at 7 a.m. and I got up three hours later at 10 a.m. Well, no, I really two and a half hours later because I didn't want to be late. So I got up 9.30, got dressed, got ready, ran down to the hall and my man, Jonathan, you know, when you, you need to count on someone, bro is always, he is always there. So Jonathan is already there and he's like, yeah, I'm here to film me, man. Let's do this. So we do the mic check. We go to the convention floor and we get a chance to hang out with people and talk to people. But I only had a couple of minutes before I had to actually go ahead and run over to a meet and greet. Yeah, that's right. I had a meet and greet. So I actually was doing a meet and greet for about like an hour, actually, right in the convention. Folks were coming up. I was meeting people. Folks, I met. Oh, my goodness. This is so cool. I met D Tinaglia Studios. Everyone knows who that is. Like, I grew up watching his Ninjago stop actions. So that was so unreal meeting him. I got to meet Brick Legend. Like, the guy who makes the best Ninjago mocks ever. Like, I got one right here. I'm part of one. The, like, Brick Legends. The, Brick Legends. This guy. So, so cool to meet in person. I'm a big fan of him and his work and his brother's work. So that was super surreal getting a chance to meet them. But we had a great time. I was shaking hands. I was giving out Duck Bricks exclusive trading cards. It was a ton of fun. People gave me some really cool stuff as well. Like I got this mystery minifigure in a, a clone helmet thing. Uh, www.battlepacks.net. So I guess they sell mystery minifigures. 
And I actually haven't opened it, but I can kind of see this one is Obi-Wan Kenobi, Jedi Knight. From the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, Jonathan did get the, the great droid, the droid that came in the Obi-Wan vs. Vader set. So I think Jonathan got a bit of a better figure than me, but this one's still really cool. And I also was given an adorable little stuffed animal duck, like a little hand crocheted duck, which was so, so cute. I think that's actually in, I have a, people give me ducks whenever I, wherever I go, like people just give me duck related things. So I have a shelf in my office of everything that is duck related that anyone has ever given me. So that's on the shelf. It is an honor for that duck to be on the shelf. Um, and, but I also got this really cool custom kit by Reversed Bricks of an ATRT Clone Walker, which is minifig scale. I can't wait to build this because that's super cool. I've been wanting a minifig scale one for a while. So it was really awesome meeting people, shaking hands, getting a chance to hear about what folks are doing. But then I literally, I was back to back to back. I had no breaks. I went immediately from there to a Lego Masters panel. So there I got to catch up with a ton of the other folks who were on Lego Masters. We did a full on panel, which was awesome. It was like an hour long answering questions. Honestly, I was like kind of cooked at that point. I was very cooked. I was waiting for someone to ask me what kind of duck I would be, to which I would have responded, pecking duck, because I'm cooked. But maybe that one wouldn't have been like a convention appropriate answer. I don't know. It would have been fun. But anyway, I was so, I was completely beat at this point. I, like the first night, three hours of sleep. Second night, three hours of sleep. Third night, two and a half. Now I've done it before, but like this was pushing it. Like this was getting close to my limit. So I was pretty cooked, but it was a lot of fun. It was great to be in there, and it was really funny seeing people who worked on LEGO Masters, who I literally saw while I was on the show in the audience. Like, they just come to hang out at the convention. So that was super cool, but then it was time for the Fold concert, basically right afterwards. And I had not eaten anything at this point, neither had Jonathan, but the two of us, we were like, all right, let's rally for the Fold, and, well... I gotta play some of the fold clips right now. And last but not least, the Lego Master himself. <laughs> Yeah, so again, words cannot describe that insane concert, but those videos sure can give you a bit of a look as to what it was like to get up there on stage with the fold and perform the Duck Bricks rap. You know, folks like to say that Duck Bricks, I mean, I, all I'm saying is that Kendrick has been real quiet ever since I released that video. I'm just saying, I haven't heard much from him, haven't heard much from Drake. I'm just saying the real rap god might have just made his appearance, you know? As they say, Duck Bricks is second to none. If you're looking for the greatest, I'm the definition. It ain't fair if you play me in a competition. I'm the king who holds a crown with no opposition. You know, the fold was on the decks, Ducky on the rhymes, the ninja big ball and the Legos time. I was cooking, you know, it was great. So, anyway, <laughs> we were completely cooked. I was, I was cooked at this point. No sleep, no food. I turned to Jonathan, I'm like, it's time to eat. So me, Jonathan, Mike... Who else? Oh, Ethan, the four of us, we go out and we go out to Portillo's, which is a Chicago staple, as I've been told. I eat there so many times last year. This may be like slander. I'm going to be completely honest. Portillo's, I get it. It's good, but it's like it was hyped up to be like, this is the place to go to in Chicago. It's like fine. I'm sorry. I, I I know like people are gonna be typing in the comments right now. Like, what are you talking about? Portillo's is the best. I mean, it's 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 all right. I I mean, it's I. I mean, like it's it's a burger. It's fries. It's chicken tenders. It's a hot dog. And yes, I did eat all four of those things at the same time. I know I ate five things, so I'm forgetting a fifth. Anyway, I ate five items at the same time. I mean, it was good. It was It was just like, yeah, these are good chicken tenders. This is a fine burger. This is a good hot dog. You know, it's that kind of food. But it was still good, so it was a lot of fun. And then guess who rolls up? 
But MR Productions with his posse, you know, they they roll up, they pull up to the restaurant. So we just join tables and we have a big group conversation, celebration, big group lunch with a ton of folks. That was a lot of fun. Mind you, I'm so cooked at this point. I wasn't getting like any footage. So you just kind of have to take me for my word. Like I could just be making up stories and lying to you right now. Who would go, who would do that? Who would go on internet? Who would go on the internet and on YouTube and just make up lies? Uh, but no, I mean, I, I was just, it's kind of the thing where I was so in the moment of the Lego stuff and the Lego convention and just hanging out with people that I just wasn't even thinking about getting footage for Duck Bricks. I was just like, you know, I'm just here to hang out and have fun and I'll have a fun story to tell at the end. So anyways, we do that and then we immediately go over to Bricking Up Brad's birthday party. Shout out to my boy Bricking Up Brad. Awesome individual, super fun to hang with. I had screwed him over the other day for a reason I'm about to explain. So I kind of felt like I, I owed him one. So I had to go to his birthday party. But no, of course, it was a lot of fun. Always good to hang out with my guy. And from there, we had to go to the infamous yard sale. This is going to be a long one, but it's going to be a hopefully funny one. I mean, if you enjoy stories of me backstabbing people funny, I don't think they enjoyed it but you will. So the yard sale. <laughs> this is a crazy video. I hope you're enjoying this video, by the way. It's a very real, like, my own personality video, which I rarely do. I'm usually like, hey there, thanks for tuning into Duck Bricks. But this is a very, like, this is Christopher Chris talking to you now. Anyway, the Brick Fair yard sale, where most of these items originated from, is pretty infamous because it is known to be one of the best yard sales ever but also one of the most, what's the nicest way I can put this? Interestingly managed. Let me, I'll, I'll leave it at that. It is also one of the most interestingly managed. So two years ago, I wasn't there, but I hear it was the best yard sale because they held it in a giant, gigantic open room. Anyone could just show up when it opened at eight o'clock and just start buying and selling. And from what I hear, that was amazing because there weren't any space issues. Everyone got to show up. Sure, people who were late missed out on stuff, but skill issue, be on time. I don't know, like just be on time if you wanna get the good stuff. I, anyway, I think that there were complaints that it was a little bit difficult because there were so many people and it was hard to, to like see things. So I, I guess I get that. So they decided to change things. Their solution to that last year, which was the first time I went, and it was fine, like it was a little, it was very chaotic, but it was fine, was to pack all of the yard sellers into a pretty small room. Like, I don't know, by pretty small, I mean double the size of my basement. But if you have a ton of sellers in there with tables, it feels pretty small. And then open the doors at eight o'clock PM and have everybody rush in and flood it, but have no sales beforehand, which obviously didn't happen. Last year, most of my best things that I bought, I bought in the hallway, intercepting the sellers right as they were about to go in and set up because I couldn't risk it. So anyways, this year they tried to do something a little different because people, well, got trampled last year. I almost did. I probably was doing some of the trampling. Not a fun time for the littler folks in the audience. I guess maybe that wouldn't apply to me. But the other people, unfortunate. So they changed it, which I think was a move in potentially a positive direction, but not the best direction. I think the best move would have been to just put it in a giant space and let him cook, which maybe that would be chaotic, but I love chaos. So I guess I was fine. What they did this year was there was a raffle system where if you got lucky, you could enter a raffle to get an entry ticket at either eight o'clock, 8.15, 8.30, or 8.45. Unless you got one of those raffle tickets, you were not permitted to enter the garage sale until 9 p.m. And listen, a full hour of the garage sale running, especially with like a fiend like me, bro, you let me in there, the good stuff is gone that I don't have in 10. Actually, if you let me in there, you're probably fine because I own everything already, like almost everything. But if you let one of those monsters like mini superheroes today in, oh, oh, the good stuff is gone gone it's cleaned out in like 10 minutes so literally every minute counted here and so knowing the the classic duck bricks luck folks have told legends and tales of the 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 amazing duck bricks luck i entered the raffle and did not get a ticket not 815 not 8 
not 8.30, not 8.45. Nope, no ticket at all, which meant that I would have had to go in at 9 p.m. And thus started a vicious blood feud between myself and Jonathan to see who could get in there first. Now, the funniest thing about this is, Jonathan and I have very different interests when it comes to LEGO. The stuff he is excited about, I probably, like, I like, because I like everything LEGO, but I couldn't really care that much about. And, like, the stuff that gets me really excited, he probably would pass up. So there was really no need for us to go this level of, like, blood feud between each other. But all bets were off. Friends became enemies. Duel of the Fates started playing. Battle of the Heroes started playing in our heads. It was Anakin versus Obi-Wan. It was Lloyd versus Garmadon. It was like Luke versus Darth Vader. It was it. Like it was two, two friends turned to the worst of enemies trying to get these dang tickets. So the battle started on like Wednesday evening where I'm going in. I'm like... Here and I'm getting I'm getting my lay of the land. I'm trying to figure out who is what tickets, but it really kicked off on Thursday night, where me Jonathan go in. We're talking to a ton of folks, and guess what? Breaking up Brad has the coveted ticket. Not eight. I couldn't dare to dream for eight, but eight fifteen, coveted ticket. We could. Oh my goodness, eight fifteen could mean a world of a difference between eight fifteen and nine p.m. And based on the prices you're about to see, oh boy, it made a world of a difference. I will tell you that, my friends. So, basically, Bricking Up Brad is like, look guys, I'm not here to buy too much. I'm sure it's not going to matter that much if I get in at 8.15 or 9. But look, I know I've got a hot commodity on my hands. I'm not giving this away for free. So Jonathan goes up to him and he's like, oh, I can get you some like, oh, superhero stuff, Marvel, DC, I'm Stan Lee, Excelsior. And Bricking Up Brad is like, cool, don't care, one castle. I'm like, hey, not only can I get you castle, what castle faction do you like? And he's like, well, I've been really looking to build my Fright Knights armies. You can't see it on camera, but I am currently looking at a Ziploc bag full of maybe 50 Fright Knights. And I go up to him and I'm like, man, 10 Fright Night minifigures, done. All yours, you send me your address, we're done. I send you the minifigs and I get that coveted 8.15 p.m. ticket. So Brad is like, ah, well, you know, I hate to do this to you, Jonathan, but I got to go with Chris. He's just offering me so much. As we're wheeling and dealing here, someone comes in, they have a seller ticket, so I start trying to negotiate for that, but obviously that one was a little bit too much of a stretch. I know I couldn't dare to dream for that. So I'm literally, we're just trying to up one each other. Like Jonathan was like, oh, I'll get you the base of the Batlord minifigure. I'm like, oh, I don't care, I'll get you two. All right, I'll get you three. No, I'll get you five Fright Night minifigures. I'll get you this, I'll get, so Jonathan and I, all bets were off. We were at each other's throats trying to get this ticket. It was, it was, it, we did not care. Like, he could have been, like, my brother. He, he basically is a brother at this point. I did not care. I was getting that 815 ticket. And he felt the same. It was, it was the battle of the heroes, baby. So, anyway, I make a handshake agreement with Brad to get his 815 ticket. But as you know, Brad didn't have his 815 ticket on him. You know how it is. You know, the duck, duck bricks is always duck business minded. All right, that was a little better than the last pun. And the duck business minded duck is always looking for a bigger, better deal. BBD. That's what my that's what my good mother used to tell me. BBD. So anyway, as we're all talking about this, this woman comes up and <laughs> her name was Amy. Thank you, Amy. Amy, you're amazing. And Amy walks up and she's like, what are you folks talking about? And I'm like, oh, well, you see, we're all just trying to fight over this 815 ticket. And she reaches in like her bag. She kind of digs around and she's like, I have an 815 ticket. Do you want it? But the key thing is she said that to me. She was like, I'm not looking to buy that much. I just happened to win the raffle, but I don't really need it. Do you want my 815 ticket? So I'm like, Brad, you're dead to me. I'm like, I don't, Brad, like we're done. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's over. You're dead. Like I just received the ticket for free. You're asking me to mail you 10 vintage minifigures when sweet Amy over here is giving me it for free? I'm sorry, Brad, but it's over. Like, it's, we're done. 
you're you're dead. So I burn Brad and I'm like, all right, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I will take that 815 ticket. But she then says, oh, well, it's not on me. I got to give it to you tomorrow. So I'm like, okay, it's fine. I'll get it tomorrow. So then just to spite me, purely out of spite, Brad then gives his 815 ticket to Jonathan. So now we are evenly matched. It is me with theoretically an 815 ticket, which mind you, I got before Jonathan did. And then Jonathan, who now has Brad's 815 ticket, and that's it. So we're like, all right, we're evenly matched. We're going to get in at 815. It'll be fine. But you may know 15 minutes makes a world of a difference. And we definitely knew that. So that night, we were all talking to the hotel room. Matt Mellish comes in. He's like, hey, guys. We're like, yeah, yeah. He was like, what you been up to? You know, we're looking for a garage sale or yard sale ticket. And Matt's like, oh, really? I have an 8 o'clock p.m. ticket. 8 o'clock p.m., the first time slot. So then, immediately, all bets are off. Jonathan and I are on him like dogs. We are just, like, offering him the world. We are throwing promises left and right. And Matt Mellis, he's a good guy. I got the sense he probably would have given it to one of us if we had cornered him alone. But he wasn't about to choose me over Jonathan or Jonathan over me. You know, I respect that. I respect it. Bro is Switzerland. He was just neutral. He didn't want to give it to one side or the other. So he was like, look, guys, I don't know. I don't know if I can give it. We were unrelenting. We were like, what do you want? What do you want? You want you want a Mr. Gold? Like, we'll give anything for this 8 p.m. ticket. It was, it was getting serious. We needed that 8 p.m. ticket. And um, convention organizers, if you're watching this, and uh, if it was against the rules to trade tickets, you didn't... I'm joking. I'm just kidding. It was just a prank. I'm, I'm, this isn't, this didn't happen, but really, I don't think that, uh, anyway, come on. Also, please move, move the dang yard sale to a larger space next year. So we don't have this issue. Anyway, Matt is unrelenting. He will not give us our eight o'clock ticket. So I'm like, okay, I'm not getting it from Matt. I got to get it from someone else. And then Jonathan on Saturday morning gives me a call. He's like, Hey man, I came across a fan of yours in the hall. And you know, Jonathan, I got to give it to him. He is an upright citizen. I cannot say if I was in his position, would I have done the same? I genuinely do not know. But he literally said, hey, look, a fan of yours came up to me and said, oh, are you Duck Bricks' friend? He was like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm Jonathan. And he's like, hey, yeah, I heard Duck Bricks is looking for an 8 p.m. ticket. I'm willing to give it to him. I just really need to get his advice on something and I just want to talk to him. And so Jonathan calls me. He was like, I hate to say it, man, but I think I got someone here who's willing to give you an 8 p.m. ticket. And well, he's not giving it to me. So I'm like, thank you, my brother. I go and I meet up with him and I'm really, really grateful, by the way. I got the 8 p.m. ticket from him and we had a good convo and we will be talking more, absolutely. So I get the 8 p.m. ticket. And so now I have won the battle, essentially. I have won this proxy war because I'll be entering a full 15 minutes before Jonathan. So, you know, I had won at this point. But I could do even better because sellers, <laughs> if you're selling something at the garage sale, you get let in at 7.30. So... That then became the real prize. Anyway, flash forward to this night. The 8 p.m. ticket is in my pocket. Jonathan also, I think, somehow gets an 8 p.m. ticket from someone. I'm sure, I think what he told that person, he was like, look, Ducks got the 8 p.m. You got to give me the 8 p.m. So he got it from someone. So we were both ready to go in at 8 p.m. We see some sellers like... We get there at 7 p.m. We get, we're so paranoid. We get there super early. Some sellers are walking down the hall. I'm like, nope, intercept. Hi there. I would like to purchase this, this, and this from you. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Oh, my God. Where are they? They're not here. Where did I put those? Oh, whew. that was scary because these, these are not cheap. It's like a, a custom, uh, well, not custom, an official glow-in-the-dark Darth Vader, which uh, some factory employees make when they're not really supposed to, but it's a full glow-in-the-dark Darth Vader, which is, like, awesome. That's super cool. And a factory test alignment minifigure as well. They were at the bottom of my luggage, 
thankfully I found them. I was a little worried for a second. I realize now I'm missing something else very rare though. So that's sad, but we'll get to that. Anyway, we intercept them. We get some purchases done, but I'm still a little dissatisfied. You know, I'm like, ah, well, the sellers, look at all that good stuff. Imagine what I would be missing out on by just not going in a little earlier. So then one of my buddies comes up to me and I am not going to name this individual because I, you know, I, I, I respect it when someone does something good for a bro and, uh, and I won't name him because he probably shouldn't have done this, but I'm very grateful because he comes up to me and he's like, Hey man, so I heard you're looking for like a way to get in the, the yard sale early. And I'm like, yeah, I really want to get in. I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to do it. He's like, okay, I've got some good stuff to sell so much that I actually am a seller in the yard sale. I am signed up to sell, but then he's like, look, my stuff is so good. And they were that he was like, I'm not worried about it. They're going to sell like somebody's going to buy this stuff from me. Whether I get in at 7.30 or at 8 or at 8.15 or even at 9, I will find somebody to sell this stuff to. Do you want my seller ticket? And he comes up to me, says this, and I'm like, dude, are you sure? And I'm like, oh my goodness, thank you so much. So we do a swap. I give him my 8 o'clock p.m. ticket. I take a seller ticket from across the hall. I lock eyes with Jonathan, wave my seller badge as I'm going in. Bro is like glaring, staring me down. I have never seen a bro this like surprised and like angered. <laughs> so I make eye contact with Jonathan and I'm just like, waving my seller ticket as I'm ushered in with the sellers. And I was given, I was selling, I was selling items. I was given a minifigure by my good friend to sell. It was a clone trooper minifigure. So if asked, and I was asked, I did have items to sell and a table to sell at. Duck Brick Store now open, now open. Come and get rare Lego items such as this exclusive Europe Stormtrooper clone trooper minifigure. Enjoy the amount of wares that I have for sale today as a certified seller here at Brick World. But of course at 7.30, you know, I'm a friendly guy, as I said earlier in this video. I'm outgoing, I like to socialize, I'm an extrovert. So I'm going around and I'm just, I'm having a conversation with people. Were they selling me their items, but not really selling them, but just promising to put them under the table so I could come buy them later? No, no, they weren't. They were just having a friendly conversation with me. It didn't matter that these items were put underneath tables when it came time to make purchases. We were just having friendly conversations. You know, it's how it is. So after 30 minutes of walking around, having good conversations with people, I then was kind of done at that point. Like, I'm like, okay, I know exactly what I'm buying. I know what my budget is. Am I over budget? Yeah but I know what I'm buying. And um, let's just say I'm not too worried about somebody else stealing them away from me. And mind you, that was a very good deal as you are about to find out. So anyway, I'm pretty good at this point. Out of the goodness of my heart and definitely not out of guilt, I call up Jonathan and I'm like, can I help you find anything? He's like, you, you, you menace. Yes, you can. I'm looking for Indiana Jones. So to my credit, I go and I point out every single Indiana Jones item I can find and I relay to him my price, you know? Whoever, no one can ever say I didn't do anything for my friends. So I spend the next like 10 minutes going around with him on the phone saying, all right, well, we've got this Temple of Doom for this much. We've got this Temple Escape for that much and so on and so forth. So he gets a good sense of what he needs to be looking for. And I also do my boy bricking up Brad a solid, who I did screw over the other night because Later that night, Brad was telling me, he's like, I really have been looking for these Fright Nights playing cards. Nobody's selling them. I can't find them anywhere. I just really need them. And that's the kind of thing, like, that's the kind of weird stuff I like. Like, I would have loved to get those Fright Night cards. Anyway, I'm like, all right, well, that's too bad. I look them up. Lo and behold, I find one listing online for them. I'm like, I could get this for myself. And, and Duck Bricks would have absolutely got it for himself. 
if not for the fact that not only did Brad really want them, but I had also kinda screwed Brad over by promising him 10 Fright Nights for his ticket and then just saying no because I got a free ticket. So I give him a text, I'm like, hey man, those Fright Night cards. The way I phrased it was, if you don't buy them in the next hour, I'm buying them. So he got them, he was happy, I'm glad he was able to get them for a good price. So everyone, everyone walked away with what they wanted, everyone walked away happy, but by this point, the yard sale had begun. And this is not just what I got at the yard sale. Some of this was made throughout purchases from other things. But I think the craziest thing is that I got these bags of Bionicle stuff. Yes, it is a flat dark gold crock on. Not a pro gold, but a flat dark gold. Not one, not two. But, ooh, this one's heavy. Three bags of Bionicle. I think if I were to tell you the price, like, viewers would click away from the video in visceral anger. And I do love viewership, so I'm not going to tell you how much I spent. But it was pretty good. I will, however, say that maybe this does cast some ideas on how much I spent on this other stuff. This is the Comic-Con exclusive Batgirl minifigure. It's not really exclusive because a minifigure appeared in the sets, but the packaging is exclusive. On Bricklink, it's probably the cheapest Comic-Con minifig you can get. You know, this goes for maybe around like 100, 200 bucks. It's not cheap. I mean, it's not expensive, but it isn't like cheap, cheap either. It's not like worthless. It's, it's like something because it's Comic-Con, you know, you're paying for the packaging. As you know, I don't care about packaging, so I would never have spent $100 on this or so, because I just don't need that. But, now where'd my beautiful little sticker go? At the yard sale, I see this sticker on it. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you can look it up on Bricklink. So, I'm like, okay. Aggressively negotiating to get in this yard sale stupid early was probably a good idea because that's the kind of thing that it doesn't matter who it is. If you're like the most casual Lego fan and you see that for $15, you're buying it no matter what. Like if you're at a Lego convention, you know you have an idea of the value of that, you're getting it no matter what. So that would have been gone. So this is why you understand it's so, like you're probably laughing at me, you're like 15 minutes, it's not a big difference. I think, like, you cannot tell me you would not have bought that for $15 if you're a Lego fan and you didn't, like, you walk in, you see that, you're getting it immediately. So, this, and, like, a lot of this stuff I got from one store, and I think I only ended up spending, like, eight or $9,000, maybe 10000 tops. So, so actually, it wasn't super bad. I mean, it was a little more than I was thinking of spending, but it was, things were very good prices, like... I don't really like to talk about prices that much, but I just want to give, like, I want to give some justification as to why I was so, like, greedily trying to get this ticket. Like, I was such a greedy little pig trying to get this, this seller ticket in this 8 a.m. or 8 p.m. to 8.15. Prices were like that, but for, like, really rare items, too, of factors of thousands. So, like, a $4,000 Lego item was $2,000. And you might be thinking, okay, $2,000 is a lot of money. But for me, who was like, I've been looking for this item, it was last sold for 4000 and there are no items of it for sale online? Seeing it for $2,000, like, done. Instant buy. Immediate, no questions asked, instant buy. And then you can haggle. So obviously, Duck Bricks is a haggler, so I'm not gonna just go and pay the price. You know, like, you gotta wheel and deal a bit. So I'm like, hey, look, Here's $9,000 worth of Lego stuff from you. Would you do $7,000 for duck brickies? For duck brickers? Well, actually, what I ask is, would you do $6,000? They say, heck no. And I say, well, would you do $7,000? And they're like, oh, okay, we'll do seven. So, you know, deals like that, where it's like, yes, money was spent, but I think money was spent wisely in, in smart areas. And I would never resell this stuff because... I'm not really a reason, I mean, I am, but like, I only resell stuff that I have doubles of. If I'm buying for my collection, that's mine. Like, I will never sell that stuff. So, everything you see here, aside from this stack, is for my collection. 
this stack is stupid. I'll explain it later. It's so funny. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy that how there are so many is what I mean by that. Um, but everything else is for my own collection. You know, like, I'm, I'm a collector first and foremost. I want to open a brick museum. As I've been told, I, I can't call it a museum. I have to call it a brick museum, which makes sense. I get it. Um, but, uh, yeah, all this is pretty much for my museum. Okay, so we're here at the legendary, infamous yard sale at Brick World Chicago. I've got my garbage bags ready, and, um, good, good buddy of mine here. Thanks, man. Actually, let me in as a seller. So I've been looking around a little bit early, doing some, some pre in allowing some pre-interest to be spread out there. So it's now time to collect my goods. So we're on the hunt for the giant castle chess set. I got a lead that it's here, but I haven't found it yet. So we're gonna look around. Okay. Hi, how's it going? Good, how are you? These are bionicles. Yeah. So let's see, how are these Honey, you make me an offer. This isn't, this, I'm doing it for a friend that isn't even into it anymore. This is sure. when they were a tiny kid and they don't want nothing to do with it. They sure. said just get rid of it. Yeah, the two years ago. Do you have any amount to buy? I honestly don't know because it's probably going to be. It's 50 people, it's 40, it's 40. So I'll take those too. Yeah. Why not? Thank you so much. Yeah, okay, you got a bag. <laughs> we priced it all out. Oh, so if you want to buy everything, we're going to knock off like 10% because you're buying a bunch of bulk. So How much is it? Uh, so the first two is 79.70, but times 79. Too bad. Yep. Good to meet you. Thank you too, Chris. So anyways, I have a great time at the yard sale, I get everything I need, and my buddies help me bring it back up to my room. Shout out to my boys Mike Labrizi and two other folks as well, so thank you so much for helping me carry all of this up to my room, it was just in my arms. I did bring garbage bags though, so that was good. But the night did not end there, so at this point it's 9pm, and Jonathan was done at the yard sale as well, and I even sold some stuff that I just bought to him. Well, like, sold, like, I got it as part of bulk, and I was like, well, just pay me a certain amount for this and go from there. Um, but then, Jonathan had been telling us for the past, like, few months about this super, super fun Sony-sponsored VR arcade game hub sort of thing. And I was like, well, if we're going, it's gotta be Saturday night, because... I'm leaving tomorrow afternoon. So me, Jonathan, Mike, Brickin' Up Brad, and Ethan, and Matt Mellish as well. So six of us all go out to Wonderverse, which is located like 20 minutes away from the convention center. And we get there like an hour before closing, but it was super, super fun because this place is kind of crazy. They had a Ghostbusters theme speakeasy, like, I'm not the biggest Ghostbusters fan. I like it enough. You know, I, I watched the movie when I was a kid. I've seen every Ghostbusters related movie. Never saw the shows or like the animated stuff, but I've seen all the movies and I, I like them well enough. But this bar made you like Ghostbusters. Like you could pull the trap, set the light. When light is green, trap is clean. You had like portraits of Vigo the Carpathian on the walls. I guess I am a Ghostbusters fan. Like I can name all this stuff. So may maybe. Anyway, Jonathan is the biggest Ghostbusters fan I've seen. So he was having a great time. But then they also had these VR experiences. Now I actually work out in VR every week. That's the way I exercise is in VR. You know, sword fighting, punching. You got your like squatting exercises. There's a lot of good stuff in VR. Like it's literally, it's seriously a good workout. So I love VR stuff. So 
we went and we did this Jumanji VR experience where it was like the funniest mashup of people ever. Um, so it was only four people like the Jumanji movies. I was, of course, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I mean, just look at me. The Rock. Jonathan was Karen Gillan. <laughs> so he was like probably around the same height. Well, no, Karen Gillan's really tall. So she, she was actually quite t a lot taller than Jonathan actually is. But, you know, Jonathan was Karen Gillan. Uh, Mike Labrizi, who was he? He was like Jack Black. And then Brickin' Up Brad was Kevin Hart. So the four of us go in, Ethan and Matt Mellish, they go in and they, they play it first and then we go in. But we were like trying to solve this thing. I just kept dying because like I was just fighting everyone and punching badly. But it was so much fun. It was super immersive. And then we got a chance to actually go ahead and do like a shooting experience for Ghostbusters 2. And I feel like we just got to see some clips of that. Yeah, that's enough. I'm allergic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ghost train! Oh my god! Whoa! Whoa. You look so stupid right now. <laughs> Let's go! Yes! <laughs> fish! Big fish! Big fish! Where at? So that was Wonderverse, but the night did not end there, because then Mike offered to show us all his Lego collection, and Mike is amazing, he is awesome. Mike, if you're watching this, thanks for being super cool, not just for being like awesome in the Lego world, but for like helping save my life when I had a nut allergy, like that was pretty cool too. Not as cool as some of this Lego stuff, that was pretty cool. Uh, but no, seriously, thank you so much. Anyway, Mike brings us to his house, and he has this insane Lego collection, where... I was seeing stuff not even I owned, and that, that's saying something. I mean, a lot of it is here now. So he was like, yeah, I mean, if, if you want to buy anything, I, I'd probably be open to making a deal. And I was like, oh, okay. What's for sale, though? Like, you got a lot of stuff here. It's clearly part of your collection. What is and isn't for sale? And he was like, I don't know. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, eh, anything. Make me an offer. So I proceeded to then take everything that I didn't already own and be like how much for all of this and Mike just made me a really really amazing deal so dude thank you so much I never would have been able to get this stuff otherwise because you just made me the most incredible deal on this ever really like it was probably the best deal ever that I would ever come across but it was a ton of comic-con stuff so it was the Captain Marvel comic-con set which I've parted together but I didn't have the box, so that was cool. It was the Star Wars Solo Millennium Falcon cockpit, so that was nice to see. It was the uh, Star Wars X-Wing and Dagobah mini build, as well as the Sandcrawler and Tatooine mini build that we got. It was also the Star Wars Detention Block Rescue from Star Wars Celebration 2017. What else did I get from Mike? It was the Comic-Con exclusive minifigure pins. I don't know where the other ones went. Like, two of them are here, and I should have Captain America as well. I'm a little worried, actually, because I, I don't know where that is. Like, it's somewhere. It might, I hope it's in my suitcase, because I was packing super... You'll, you'll hear about my packing story. So I'm kind of scared about that. That's, like, the only item unaccounted for that I'm a little worried about, because that's really rare. But it's somewhere. Captain America pin. It was every McDonald's specialized poly bag right here so every mcdonald's poly bag it was a ton of stuff it was just a ton of really cool stuff like comic-con stuff rare items and he also was sitting on just for whatever reason a ton of lego masters exclusive europe gwps which of course i had to get of course ethan got some as well but it was really cool of him to just uh, sell all of them at once to me in bulk so i'm really thankful for that and it was super awesome because now I'll obviously be keeping one, but the rest of them I'll probably sign and uh, maybe put on whatnot or something like that. So thank you, Mike, for giving me a great deal on that stuff. Oh, and he also 
let me get a great deal on this thing right here. Somewhat embarrassingly, I have a funny story about the Cloud City set. Because everyone assumes someone like me has Cloud City. And the answer is that yes, I have Cloud City. But here's the thing. I got Cloud City when it came out. I was like four years old. It was passed down to me from a relative and I took it apart and used the pieces for other stuff. I have all the minifigures because I had it when the set came out, but like, you know, it was Cloud City. It was like, I didn't really like the set when I was a kid, so I just used the parts to build my own stuff. I've never once had the motivation to dig through my parts bins and remake Cloud City because it's kind of a weird set and it has enough exclusive pieces or like hard to find pieces that it's kind of annoying to find them in my unsorted parts bins. And it's always been in the back of my head. Like every time someone is like, hey, where's Cloud City? I'm like, yeah, I have it, but I don't have it. It's kind of weird. So anyway, Mike had a copy of Cloud City without Boba and without Lando. And I was like, well, okay then. That's a great deal. And it's a good chance for me to get this super rare Lego set because it's just the parts and yeah, Leia's still rare, Luke is still rare, but it's basically just all the parts I need without the two most expensive minifigures, which is exactly what I need, because I don't need Boba and Lando because I already have them. So he sold it to me for an amazing price. Big, big thank you to Mike for doing that. I'm very, very grateful for that. And now I can actually have the parts to build it without having to dig through my parts collection. So it's a win-win for everyone and expect to see those figures up for sale in either BrickLink or whatnot, linked in the description below, because I sure don't need two copies of them. But that was awesome. I also bought a second copy of the UCS TIE uh, Advanced, because if you watched my top 10 rarest LEGO parts video, I mentioned I was missing these two exclusive pieces for my copy of the TIE Advanced. And so, I was like, hey, would you sell me just the two parts? And he was like, well, I'd rather sell the entire thing. And I'm like, hey, I get that. I understand. Make me an offer, your best price for it. He made me an amazing offer, which I'm very grateful for. So I bought it. And then as I'm walking into the con hall, somebody's like, oh my God, you have the UCS tie advanced. I've been looking for that. And I'm like, would you like to buy it without the two most expensive pieces? And I will cut you an amazing deal. So I literally sold it like within minutes of getting it. But then I got a chance to get the two pieces I really needed for almost nothing, which is pretty perfect because I just was able to work out deals that way. So now my tie advanced is complete. I wish I did this before putting out the top 10 rarest parts video because in that video I forever have said, I don't own these parts and everybody now, the many people who have seen that video are now like, oh, Duckbrooks is missing the tie advanced windscreen piece and the cockpit piece. But now I do have it. So that's amazing. So now my set is officially complete. But then we got back at like midnight and I'm like, okay, finally I can go to bed early. I'm cooked, I'm beat, it's time to sleep. Well, we run into, we run into none other than many good friends of ours. It was like a revolving cast at this point, like JB Bio Productions and so many other folks. And we just sit down and start talking and Dom was there too. And we have one conversation after another. I'm talking to people about startup stuff and my businesses and my life and it's awesome. And I'm hearing more about other people's lives and hearing what they do for work and how that's going. And before I know it, the sun's going up. It's 6 a.m. and I'm, I'm cooked. I get back to my room at 6 a.m. and I see this pile of, of, of stuff on my bed. And I realize that I haven't packed anything yet. So I am completely cooked. I then spend from like 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. packing. And I packed my Ramoa luggages so tight, I've never seen this before in my life. I packed them so tight, the lock snapped in half. Thankfully, I have warranty and everything. But that's wild. Like, I stuffed so much in there, the lock literally snapped in half. So anyway, I get it all packed and it's time to watch the sunset or rise, I guess in this case, on a grateful universe. I go to bed at like 8.30. So I shower, I get to bed, I'm in bed. And then I wake up bright and early the next day. Well, bright and early. I wake up at like 10 the next day. So I had two hours of sleep. So I'm gonna be honest, I have not been getting a lot of footage because 
I've kind of just been hanging out with people and having fun and not really thinking about filming for Duck Bricks. So that, that's on me. My, my apologies. I hope my fun explanations of the video were helpful. So it's, it's 5 a.m. Obviously, y'all know what I did last night, and I really thought I was going to go to bed a lot earlier, but I am now realizing that I, I need to pack all of this. I mean, it's not like that much, you know, it's like uh, Lego, you know, there's more in here, but I need to pack all this before checkout tomorrow, so I'm definitely not getting sleep. Oh my, oh man, who's, who's at the door? Oh, celebrity appearance. What's up? Yo. It's like 4.45 in the morning, Yo. let's go. One and a half. I'm, I should be sleeping now. I should not be recording this. Oh my goodness. I should go to bed. It's like 1 a.m. here in Seattle. And it's, I'm filming this the day I got back. I should sleep. <laughs> anyway. I'm, I'm, a little, I'm a little extra flame broiled this video, you know? You can tell when the duck is a little too cooked. But I go to bed, I get one and a half hours of sleep, and then I get up, I have breakfast with Jonathan and, and a couple other folks, and then it's time for a LEGO YouTuber panel. So I have a really fun LEGO YouTuber panel, but I kind of feel a little bad. I have the poster here. All the people here pictured took it very seriously like they're giving actual answers to the people's questions like people are asking them serious stuff about how you grow your channel and and all good stuff like that and and these these fine folks danny bob b3 republic studs and uh tiago they're all giving like tiago they're all amazing i love these people they're all giving like great answers to people's questions and then it gets to me and then i'm just like joking like, I, I hope that people had fun. People seemed to, like, people were cheering every time I answered, so maybe that meant they were having a good time. Or, or I just have very loud and vocal fans. But, um, they would answer seriously, and then I would just, like, kind of, like, mess around and not give a real answer. Like, I would give a real answer, but not really a real answer. And then I was, like, making fun of the slideshow and be like, oh, you should have capitalized. I don't know. I was having a good time. I hope other people enjoyed it. But I was so sleep-deprived at this point, I could only make jokes, like... There's a point in time where I just have so little sleep that I can't take anything seriously. So I was just like having a great time there, cracking up, having a good time with folks. Yo, I met Cheesy Studios' wife. That was awesome. I'm meeting him. I mean, seeing him again in person was cool too. But it was awesome meeting him. That was cool. So I got to, it was, it was good hanging out with a ton of folks there. But uh, I was cooked at that point. And then immediately after this panel, we had a meet and greet for me again. So I had to go and do my meet and greet. I was meeting folks and I was like, okay, I'm done. Thank you, this has been so much fun. It is time for me to leave. As I'm exiting the conference, I get drafted into somebody making the Guinness World Record of Largest Clone Trooper Army. Who was that? I could look them up. I know who they are, I definitely know. Anyway, I'm part of that now, so that's awesome. I hope that has been announced already. Uh, but yeah, apparently I am now now included in uh, making the largest clone trooper army. So stay tuned because I do have quite an army myself, which I'll be contributing to the cause. As I was waiting for my Uber, I got drafted into the, the Grand Army of the Republic. And then I get to the airport and I am cooked. You're probably wondering how I got this home. This is a store display. And the answer is super easily because it fit in the overhead compartment of the airport, of the airplane. I'm so cooked. Air airport, airplane. So it fit. It was totally good. So that was awesome. And I got home and now I'm filming this. So I hope you enjoyed this coverage of Brickworld Chicago. Quite an interesting time. There's only, I mean, all the mocks were amazing. Like I love seeing the mocks. There were like a couple that really stood out to me. And one of them was my good friend Lewis's from Lego Masters season four. Cause now I'm realizing I didn't talk about Lego builds at all. Like, I barely talked about the convention at all, so I should probably talk about that a bit now. Like, at the end, like, how many hours has it been? Like, an hour? Two? Thir 30 minutes? No, way more than that. Probably two hours into this video. Dude, I said this video was going to be, like, short. I thought this video was going to be, like, 30 minutes tops. I'm cooked. Anyway, good mocks that I saw. Lewis's gigantic spire. Admittedly, I didn't see it fully finished. 
but I saw it being partially built. And as it was being partially constructed, I was like, that is some good food. Exquisite, exquisite rock work. Amazing stuff. So seriously, great job, Lewis. I think he won best medieval mock as well. Well-deserved as he should have. Because that was awesome. And you can check it out on Instagram. But then I also saw this really, really amazing build. It was this gigantic statue looking up to the sky that was literally built out of buildings. And it's kind of rare for me to like stop and just gawk at a mock. Like I've seen so many amazing mocks that like I'm pretty unfazed, but that was so cool. So huge kudos to whoever designed that. And there were a lot of other amazing mocks. Like there was a tapestry mock or a, like a cloth draped around a chair that I didn't even realize was Lego. Really, really cool stuff. But those were the mocks, and now I think it's time to check out the hall. So this is the hall from Brickworld Chicago, and there's some really interesting stuff here. So obviously I already put out a video on this, the pinball machine, which was the very first time that ever appeared online, and I am selling a second copy, so you can check that out if you want, linked in the description but it's a super weird 2023 employee manager Las Vegas conference that they held last year. Very, very weird Lego set, no documentation online, although I'm working on it. Maybe by the time this video comes out, it will be online, but otherwise no documentation of it online. So that was super cool to see. And I got a lot of other really interesting stuff as well. So the rarest items I got were these bad boys here. They're like two to three to $4,000 a piece per item. And these are minifigures from the Lego brand retail managers conferences. So we have 2015, 2016 was Zach the Lego Maniac, which I already own. I believe 17 was a magician and 18 was the camper. And those are the exclusive minifigures that we know of. I don't know if any more exist. If they do, they sure haven't popped up online. So that was very cool to see. They also came with some of these exclusive sets like a zombie apocalypse battle van, which is very interesting, as well as a magician a rabbit in a hat. So that's super cool as well. I was gifted this sealed Matoro, which I'm very grateful for. Thank you so much. Jonathan also gifted me these Ninjago make and take builds. So that was super cool. Can check that off for my collection. And I also got this uh, Lego store grand opening in uh, Somerset in Troy, Michigan. So that's kind of interesting. It's like a little car. That's pretty cool. Yeah, never seen that before. Uh, what else did we see? Okay, we got the employee gift set of Ole Kirk Christensen's house, which is a very rare set. I guess technically I own it already. Oh, I pivoted the camera to its old location. It's actually in that room over there. But I don't actually own it. I re-bricked it and I purchased custom stickers. But now I have the legit ones. So... I do have the legit sort of the actual item here and now that's the real thing. So that is super cool. So moving on from that, we have that wooden chest set I mentioned. We have a Ninjago possession store display. Super cool to see this. Look at this, this is awesome. It is the Morrow Dragon. It is all sorts of really cool stuff. Actually, it's just the Morrow Dragon. Oh, and Cole's motorcycle as well. So the Deep Stone motorcycle and the Morrow Dragon. That was very cool as a display. It also lights up. There's a light switch on the back. I, I can't hit it right now, but there is a light switch. It's very cool. And I got a ton of Ninjako card packs. I'm trying to complete my collection of all of them. So that was super cool because I even had some older ones. Like they had some from Sons of Garmadon. They had some Prime Empire ones. I don't know where the Sons of Garmadon ones are. They're here somewhere. Those are cool though. I'm very tired. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope you're enjoying this video. We have, of course, the Lego Masters Europe exclusive GWP. Never did that in the US, so that's super interesting. Another copy of the amazing Ninjago Bricktober pack because that is just super cool. I love those minifigures there. We have those aforementioned Comic-Con stuff that I already called out. There is a Cube Dudes Bounty Hunter set, which is perfect because I already have the Cube Dudes Heroes Clone Wars set. Can we see them? Yeah, we can see them. Yeah, we can see him right there. The box of that is actually signed by Angus McLean, director of uh, Lightyear and some other movies from Pixar. So that one's cool. But uh, this one is the Bounty Hunters one. We have the employee gift from 2009, which is a heart. That one is very nice. We have a New York exclusive cab set, given that I'm moving to New York by July. That made total sense for me to get. Of course, we got Cloud City. We had the one like Harry Potter Hogwarts that I didn't own yet. We have a Lego System Explorian set. That's pretty neat. 
a Lego Playday poly bag, which is quite rare actually with some printed components, a Lego Movie camera tin. Super weird set. This is actually quite strange. There's not a ton of documentation on this one. There's some. You can find it online. There's not a lot, though. It's basically a camera. Super interesting thing, though. It's a movie camera. I might do a video on this at some point. It's a cool thing. Just interesting piece of Lego promotional stuff. Of course, you have those Thai advanced cockpit pieces, and there is my copy flying back there with the wrong pieces on it. Those are the wrong pieces for the cockpit. So it's very, very exciting to finally be able to have the correct ones there. The aforementioned uh, Batgirl Comic Con minifigure. You have a, which one is this? Jabba's Prize. Otini! Oh, that's a Jawa. Eh, close enough. You have a, a duck keychain here. Oh yeah, this is an employee only metal duck keychain. So that's super cool because only employees can get that and it's a duck, so it's better for duck bricks. We have a factory test alignment minifigure, which they use to align prints on. So it's uh, the factory machines know how to print. I have one of these that's dual molded, but I wanted to get one of the regular ones because it's a little bit cool. We have the Doc Ock transformation set, which is another really fun one, or it's a fusion reactor, the power of the sun in the palm of my hand. We have an infamous poly bag. Did you know this is the only place to get a red baby dinosaur? They never included this in any other set other than this in that color. Crazy to see. Coca-Cola Man poly bag, Lloyd Ninjago movie poly bag. I think that one was given to me. We have these uh, exclusive Brickbuster and Sonic Comic-Con pins. Somewhere, not here, but hopefully somewhere is the Captain America one. And I'm still missing the Luke and Leia Endor speeder one as well. Glow in the dark, Darth Vader. What else have we got? Oh, a Lego 90 Years of Play board game, which was a special employee gift set, and then some sealed Lego Fright Night sets. I should really send, I should send one of these to Brad. See, I, my guilty conscience is tugging at me now. I'll probably give him one, or I'll give him some Fright Nights. I'll send him something. But uh, I think that is about it. Oh, and of course the Bionicle bags. The Bionicle bags, Bionicle bags. Lots and lots of goodies in here. Lots and lots of goodies in here. Oh, that's awesome. That's cool. That's like a 60 buck mask, maybe 70. That's wild. But otherwise, lots of good stuff. Ninjago cards, weird Lego promo items. Is this eight, nine, ten thousand dollars worth of Lego stuff? I mean, probably not. I mean, probably actually. I mean, it's got the Comic-Con stuff. So yeah, actually, I would say probably more. Let me delude myself into thinking I made smart financial decisions. Cool. Yeah, well, that's the haul. Thanks, everyone. Hope you enjoyed this video. I need to get some sleep. I think this is the tiredest I've ever been on a video. So thank you for bearing with me and being patient. I hope you enjoyed this fully honest, like, Full, just honest reactions, Duck Bricks having a conversation with you vlog. As I have said many a time in this video, I am cooked, so I am going to bed. Good night, stay tuned for more, and be sure to like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon. Thank you so much, bye for now, subscribe to Duck Bricks, subscribe to Mini Superheroes Today, subscribe to Matt Mellish, subscribe to Ethan the Artisan, Subscribe to Bricking Up Brad. Subscribe to Maticus. Subscribe to Jean's version. Subscribe to Girl Bricks a lot. And do not subscribe to Cool Guy Dom. That's all for now. Thanks so much and bye bye.